Hello, welcome back to my channel, you guys. Happy New Year, if I hadn't had a chance to say that already. I wanted to just sit down and make a New Year video with you guys, introducing you a little bit more to me personally and letting you in on why I actually decided to study and become a social worker. I make a lot of social work videos, but let's just rewind it back and talk about how I even got interested in this field because this wasn't always an area I thought I would go in, to be honest. So if you're interested in hearing about my story and why I became a social worker, then keep on watching. But before we jump in, I wanna let anyone who's new here know that my name is Gabby Taylor. My cat is playing with his cat toy. Give me one second, I'll be back. My name is Gabby Taylor. I am a macro social worker and career coach, and I have been making videos on this channel for about seven years now, all around career development, purposeful living, and social work. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested in those kind of topics. But with that all being said, let's just jump into the video today. And I'm also gonna be drinking on this really cool glass of coffee that I made. So if you have a beverage that you'll like to sip on during this video, make sure you grab one because this may be a little bit long. To rewind it back a bit, I grew up in a neighborhood that had some challenges. We'll just say it like that. I grew up in a neighborhood that had a high number of black and Hispanic residents, and it was definitely a more working class neighborhood, and it came with some challenges. So some situations that I remember in my neighborhood growing up was gang violence. So at the time when I grew up in the 90s, that was kind of a bigger thing. So we did experience that. Um, there was also some gun violence. So even at a young age in elementary school, I remember losing some classmates to gun violence. And it's really sad to think about, but I've lost friends, acquaintances, classmates, and even family members to gun violence. So if that kind of explains where I come from, I think that will help to paint the picture of why I got interested in social work. I didn't really know if social work existed at that time, but I knew pretty early on that I did not like living in this kind of situation. I didn't think it was fair and I didn't want other people to have to experience PTSD like I do sometimes from living in a neighborhood that had these kind of challenges. There was also some wealth inequality where I grew up as well. So barriers in place that prevented people in my neighborhood, my family from reaching certain levels of financial success or financial comfort. So, you know, that's where I was coming from, but I also went to a high school that exposed me to other people and other experiences that my classmates were living. And at that moment, I realized that, you know, I grew up having less resources because I would see what my classmates had, what their parents had compared to my own situation. So, that was my first experience with that wealth gap that exists in the United States. And I didn't know exactly how I wanted to make a difference. I didn't even know social work existed. And even if I did know about the field, I didn't really know the ins and outs of it. I probably thought like a lot of other people that it was mostly related to child protective services. The point I'm trying to make is that I knew I wanted to be a part of changing things so that other young people would not have to experience what I experienced. And I also was involved in extracurricular activities that exposed me to making some kind of community difference. So for example, when I was growing up, I was interested in poetry and spoken word. I was a part of a community organization in high school called Mad Poet Society, and it stands for Making a Direct Difference. So we would go around to different communities and do poetry, do spoken word around topics related to um, social issues. That's how I knew that I was always a social worker even before I had the degree, because even at the age of 14, 15, et cetera, I was making poetry and spoken word pieces that was based on social issues that I saw around me and just reflecting on how it made me feel. I wanted to speak up against that. So I started doing that at a pretty early age. I also wanna mention something else that maybe you all can relate to if you're into social work right now, but I originally got interested in social work and psychology because I wanted to figure out how to fix myself. As I mentioned, I did have family members and friends who 
lost their lives due to violence and due to living in the circumstances that they were living in. And that caused a lot of PTSD. Even to this day, I still have anxiety around those issues that happened when I was very young. But originally I got interested in psychology and social work because I wanted to figure out what was wrong with myself. I knew I was experiencing PTSD and I knew that there were certain blockages in my life based on what I had gone through. I wanted to figure it out. I wanted to make myself whole again. So if you are interested in social work, I would love if you could just take some time to think about if this is also the case for you because I find that this is pretty common. Actually, I have a friend who told me that her psychology teacher in undergrad told everyone on the first day of school that they should probably seek counseling because the mere fact that they're interested in this class probably showed that there were some internal issues within themselves that they were curious about learning how to fix and improve. That's just an interesting fact that I wanted to bring up. Um, not only did I want to study social work and psychology to better understand the world around me and how I can make it better, but also so that I could get information and knowledge to help myself as well. Originally, when I started thinking about social work, I wanted to become a psychologist. I wanted to do direct practice. I wanted to be a black therapist because there were not a lot of us out there. And even today, there's still not a lot of us out there. So if any of you are interested in therapy or you're currently doing therapy, specifically if you are a minority, a black person, thank you all so much for the time that you put into our community because there is a big need for therapy in the black community. There's a big stigma around it. So just having more people out there who look like us, who's showing people that it's okay to get therapy and to get help with certain mental struggles, like, man, it's such a necessary and I'm super proud of everyone out there who's doing that work because that's originally what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to do therapy, but I didn't really know the different avenues out there to do it. Originally, I thought the only way to do therapy was by being a psychologist. I thought I had to go the PhD route and, you know, go to school for five to seven years, get that research experience, etc. I later found out that that wasn't the case during my third year in my bachelor's of psychology program. And it was weird because I can remember having this period where I was figuring out if I wanted to transfer from psychology to social work. And I remember sitting in my dorm room, writing down the pros and cons of choosing psychology or social work. And I remember one pro that I had listed as a reason to switch from psych to social work was that it would be cool if I could get my master's degree in one year and be an advanced standing student. So that's something that you all may want to think about um, if you're in like a si similar situation trying to figure out if you want to get your bachelor's in social work or something else. I, you know, in the end decided to just finish my bachelor's in psychology because even though I disliked math and I didn't like my statistics classes, I knew that it was a challenge for me and it was an area that I wanted to grow in and become stronger in because kind of going back to me talking about the background that I'm from, I didn't really get a strong math foundation growing up. I remember, you know, the public school system was a little bit crazy and the teachers were more focused on ending disruptive behavior as opposed to just hardcore teaching. A big challenge that I've always had was math. Studying psychology gave me that opportunity to really overcome that challenge and to grow in that way. I knew that I wanted to have a strong hold and grasp on basic math and basic statistics. I thought that would just be good for me when I'm going into the field and doing program evaluation work. And also just for my own personal reasons, I, I didn't want to run away from math and statistics classes. I had already like started that journey of getting through those classes and I felt that I would be giving up if I stopped right in the middle and switched over to social work, which was less math intensive. Something to think about if you're not like me and you hate math and you don't really want to challenge yourself to get better at it, maybe social work is a better fit than something like psychology or another bachelor's degree that may be heavier in math. 
Today, I mean, yes, I do have to do math to a certain extent, but I think that's more because I, I did go the macro route. Um, so if you're not going the macro route, maybe that background isn't as important for you. And also, I mean, with programs like Excel spreadsheets, you really don't have to do a lot of math yourself anyway. You mostly just have to learn certain formulas. And once you learn how to do certain formulas, math isn't really that necessary. But after I got my bachelor's in psychology or a little bit before I graduated, I did have to make a decision about if I wanted to go and get my PhD in psychology or if I wanted to get an MSW in social work. And remember at this time, I still wanted to be a therapist. So I decided to get my MSW in social work instead because I just couldn't settle on the idea that I would have to sign up to go to school for the next six years. I was already kind of burned out from school at that point. I just wanted to get my degree in two years and go on my way and continue my life. So that's why I decided to get my master's in social work. I was just ready to get my hands dirty and start being very hands-on. Okay, so that's kind of my background and why I decided to study social work. And the reason I decided to do macro and switch from my goal of being a therapist is because during my first year, my school exposed us to direct practice and also more program development courses. So I was exposed to macro social work. I was also given the opportunity to take classes like leadership development, social entrepreneurship, and the professors that taught those classes were very inspiring to me. You know, I really looked up to them and they shared their work experience with us and just their career journey. And they were doing more macro level work. I had one professor, um, Professor Butterfield, and she taught our entrepreneurship class. And she had done like a lot of phenomenal international work doing program development. And I feel like that really sparked something inside of me just hearing her work. And that sounded more intriguing for me than being a direct practice um, case manager or a therapist. I was just really excited about the opportunity to create programs that could impact a larger number of people. And I think even taking her class is what got me interested in teaching in South Korea and doing that international work and just getting experience learning about cultures and people in different societies. But yeah, taking these more macro level social work classes made me interested in learning about societies as a whole. And I also had a background in sociology because that was what my minor was in in undergrad. I think I really enjoyed pulling from the elements of social work that helped to connect me back to that minor in sociology. Because yeah, thinking back on it, I was a really big fan of my sociology classes. I remember taking classes around health disparities in certain countries and I took a class around deviant behaviors and that class helped me learn more about you know what is culturally acceptable and how are people who are not in line with culture or the cultural norms treated and why are they treated this way so yeah all of that was very interesting and is ultimately what helped me to decide that I wanted to go into macro. To kind of sum everything up, I decided to go into social work because I have life experience that taught me pretty early on that life is not necessarily equal. You know, there are some people who have it a bit easier than other people. And there are folks that are dealing with issues in society that are not due to their own choices or, you know, it's not something that they kind of brought about themselves. It was just based on where they grew up, the family dynamics, their environments, you know, all of that impacted their lives in a certain way. And when I say they, I mean me and the people in the community that I grew up in, we didn't necessarily have it the easiest and no fault of our own, so I wanted to just give back in my career to people who grew up in communities such as myself. And I particularly was interested in helping other black people who was economically disadvantaged and didn't come from communities where there were a lot of resources. And I'm super happy that I'm able to do that kind of work today. And I also wanna say that even though I did grow up in a working class family, 
I did have a very supportive family and where they were not necessarily able to support, they connected me with resources in my community that could help to fill those gaps. So for example, I was a first generation college student and my mom put me in a program in my neighborhood that could help to bridge that gap for me between high school and college. Even though my family may not have had certain experiences, they really made it a point to connect me to resources. I just wanted to put that out there because although I did grow up the way I grew up, I also acknowledge that I had certain opportunities that other people in my neighborhood didn't have and I'm super thankful and super blessed for that. But yeah, this is my social work story and why I decided to study social work. I think we all have unique stories, especially because social work is such a purposeful kind of career. It's, I don't think anyone just lackadaisically, I don't know if that's a word or not, but I don't think anyone just choose the social work on a whim. I think most of us have a story about what made us want to go in this field. Please tell me your social work story down in the comment section. I'm super curious to learn more about you guys and to learn more about where you're coming from and what your backgrounds are. I know there's people from all over the world who watch my videos, so I'm super curious to learn more about you guys. Thank you so much for watching my video today and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye-bye.